Hi, today I'll be talking about the case of avian flu, how climate change accelerates transmission of zoonotic diseases. So first a bit about me. My name is Michelle So, and I'm an incoming ecology and evolutionary biology major at Yale University. And I graduated this past spring from Arcadia High School in California. So in high school, I was involved in several different things. I was captain of my science Olympiad team and competed in several other academic teams. I was editor in chief of my school newspaper and I did genetic research at Caltech and volunteered once a week at a hospital. So in the future, I'm really interested in pursuing a career in parasitology or epidemiology, since my two biggest passions are public health and environmental science. And so today my presentation will first introduce the idea of our environment, health, and my interest in birds. And then next I'll explain the developing avian flu pandemic and then touch on why climate change can accelerate the spread of diseases. Last, I will leave you all with some key takeaways from my presentation. So first, what's up with the environment and our health? Well, I became interested in environmental science because of my love for birds. And so in middle school, I was really involved in Science Olympiad, especially the ornithology event. And so by eighth grade, I'd memorized over 200 North American bird species. And throughout high school, I began doing some more conservation work, such as bird watching and bird banding at a local research station. And so because of my love for birds, I became especially aware of a growing threat on the horizon, which is avian flu. And so what is avian flu? Well, avian flu is a type of zoonotic disease, which is a disease transmitted between or from animals. And it's a subtype of the influenza A virus and begins in wild waterfowl, such as ducks or geese. And so as of right now, it's already known to have killed millions of wild birds and poultry in just the last 20 years alone. And so with avian flu, it begins in the wild with wild birds, but it can eventually make its way to humans by infecting livestock. And so a big concern that we have is this virus jumping between different species, because as we'll touch on later, this can cause serious problems in the long run. So over the last 20 years, there have been 909 reported cases, but it's important to note that there have been no human to human transmissions. And so because of this, the CDC still lists its human health risk assessment as low, but we are concerned about the spread of avian flu. So viruses rely on other organisms to survive, and it's the reason why their status as living things is still contested in the scientific world. But when viruses jump from species to species, something known as antigenic shift occurs. And this is when two or more strains of virus combine to form a new subtype that can be more potent or better infect humans. And this often occurs in pigs because they can be infected from a variety of viruses from both humans and livestock. And so what is climate change's role in this? Well, recent data gathered from various trusted climate science research organizations showed that the Earth is around 1.36 degrees Celsius warmer in 2023 than it was in the late 19th century. And so without a doubt, we know the Earth is warming, but this has major implications, not just on the meteorological sciences, but in the fields of public health as well. And so a study published by the Climate Change and Health Journal showed that climate change has major effects on influenza. And so this study found that warming climates were associated with increased rates of mutation and transmissibility, and that viral viability, or the amount of time that the virus can survive outside of the host, increased with increasing temperatures. And then with animal hosts, we know that climate change shifts the natural range of organisms. As places get too warm, animals tend to move northwards towards colder climates, while as the climate or the weather patterns may cool down, animals might move south in response to that change. And so there is evidence that avian migration is affected by these changing weather and climate patterns. And these factors may alter the timing of migrations, stopover lengths and breeding seasons, as well as the locations and occupation times of the breeding sites. And so all of this actually leads to increased transmission of influenza between domestic birds and wild migratory birds. And once domestic birds are infected, that's where the diseases or viruses are able to spread from animals to humans.
with the humans, as the climate warms, natural disasters such as hurricanes and extreme weather patterns like droughts become more and more common. And so cleanliness and hygiene becomes a major concern, as does food security. And as agricultural industries are affected, people move in greater numbers towards cities. And as population density increases, there is also an increase in disease transmission. So one factor that the study did not mention was the prevalence of insect vectors. So vectors are living things that transmit pathogens. And some examples may include ticks, fleas, mosquitoes, and blowflies. And what's really concerning is that a recent study in Japan found that blowflies may be a vector for H5N1, since they might interact with infected fecal material or infected organisms and spread the virus to other animals. So this is especially concerning because warmer temperatures allow arthropods and other insect vectors to breathe longer, occupy larger ranges, which all leads to increased disease transmission. So what's the big picture? Well, avian flu is just one example of how climate change drives diseases towards humans. Changes in wild animals' migrations leads them closer to urban areas where they're able to spread their diseases to us. Global warming also strengthens viruses, as we learned earlier in the study on influenza and climate change, and it enables disease vectors like blowflies to survive and reproduce for a greater part of the year. And so the biggest takeaway is the idea that our environment affects our health. I mean, we've already noticed many of these issues arise in recent decades with carcinogenic pollutants, smog, respiratory illnesses, and natural disasters threatening millions. And I think identifying these patterns and addressing them at their source is an essential part of public health. And so my goal is just to get everyone to care about our planet and engage in environmental stewardship whenever they can. Because as we care more about our earth, we're also able to guarantee safe, clean and nurturing environments for generations to come. So here are the references that I utilized for my presentation. And I wanted to thank everyone for listening. And one more thank you to the Global Health Leaders Conference for this opportunity to speak.